Hello everyone. Today we are going to speak about meshes and how we, we can make some forms out of them. Let's, uh, let's start from a curve in Rhino. And I'm going to add this curve to the grasshopper screen. And using um, mesh surface, I want to make a mesh from this curve. Uh, but before adding this curve to the surface, uh, I need a boundary surface. So now as you see, I can connect the output of this uh, boundary surface to the surface input of the mesh. And let's hide everything in Rhino and also in Grasshopper, uh, except for this mesh. And uh, we can add the numbers for U and V. Let's say start with eight for both of these uh, values and we can then modify it. The next step is to uh, extract some points uh, that we want to define as support points which will remain the structure at these points and uh, define other parameters that we will continue together. So first let's um, take mesh uh, corners And uh, you can find these mesh corners inside the kangaroo tool, which we will use today, and uh, in the, the mesh part in here. Okay, I'm connecting the output of mesh to the M input of mesh corners. And now you can see that we have these points. We could also just extract this uh, curve and take the vertexes, but this is also another way. So now I want to start making my uh, Kangaroo physics. So la uh, let's work with solver. We can also uh, use different types of them, which we have bouncy solver and also step solver or zombie solver. But for now, let's just consider working with the simple solver. And uh, there are things that I have to define. First, the supports. Um, which uh, is called anchors and they are inside the goals point these are uh, these are point anchors and uh, I can connect the output of these corners to the point input and um, I can define the strengths let's consider starting with 100 it shows that how much these uh, support po points are strong and can take the uh, structure in its uh, own place. There's also a target which you can define. For example, you want to uh, move this uh, support point from here to this par part uh, while it's uh, taking the loads or whatever. But now we just don't need them and we want these points to stable the structure in these uh, locations. So this was one point uh, and I'm making a group of it and define it as supports. The other thing that we need is a load. So let's use point load, which is also in the goals point. And um, I can define which parts of the this mesh I want them to have a point load. So for doing this, I can use naked vertices, the component naked vertices, and you can find it uh, also in the mesh part in here. It was in here. And I can use uh, this mesh and take different points of it. We have two important outputs. One is the clothed points, which are these inner points. And also we have the naked points that the, are the points that are in the boundary. So let's uh, work with these clothed points. And I want to define them as the points that I want to have a load on them. And let's define the vector for our load to be on Z. It's also now on Z, but just let's uh, connect it to the z vector and then I can uh, define what weight it has 
I mean how much load it uh, has inside itself and let's uh, work with something from 23 to 4.5 and I put it in here I make another group in here and write load it makes me to think better and know what I'm doing in here so the other thing that we need is a component show which shows the result I mean the mesh result of your uh, solver and it's in the main part as you see in here so I'm adding this mesh to the G uh, input and I also make a group of it just to know what it is and uh, the other thing that I need is that I want this uh, string that I have in here this mesh that I have in here and um, have a control on how much this uh, um, mesh lengths are um, being kept so let's uh, first uh, test without uh, considering this component and then we will do it so first let's just merge these uh, outputs that we have in here the mesh the load and also the support and I'm going to connect it to the goals object and I need to just flatten the input and it has an on and a reset which uh, I use a boolean toggle for the on and set it on false because I don't want to uh, this to work at, at the moment that I connect it and uh, also I use a button to reset so now let's connect it to the goals uh, object and as you see it doesn't work because it's on false so now that I'm sure that everything is connected right I can just true make it true and press the button to reset and as you see it's just not working as we desire and we want it to be so now let's put it on fast and hit the reset button to just take it to the first uh, phase and now we see that there is something needed and what it is is the edge length this is in here and you can also find it inside this goals mesh here so now if I connect this mesh to the mesh input and uh, also the strengths let's work from 1 to something like 8 just to see what it results and uh, I'm going to add to my merge inputs and also add this one in here now we can have a test uh, and before we continue just hide these parts we just want to see the output and now we can put it on true and reset so now you see that it is making something that we were ex expecting it to be so if now I just change these numbers we can see that the supports are getting less uh, strengths something like 100 would be suitable for now and uh, for the load we can also increase the number or make it less we can also put it on starting from zero To see it is becoming to the flat state and um, also about this number that we defined and it's the strength of how it can keep this uh, length we can make it bigger or we can just put it on one as you see when we increase this number it is more making it to come to this uh, flat state because it wants uh, the length to just keep at, as it was in the first phase so that's it for this part 
And now we can consider uh, how we want this mesh to be different. So in here, we decided these points to be our supports, but we also can define different supports for our structure. Let's say instead of this input, I can just uh, delete it and um, take the output of these naked points, which we defined in here. So if I connect this input to the point and reset it, you can see that the structure is completely different and uh, some kind of inflated structure. And as you see, by uh, increasing this number, it's more inflated or coming back to the flat state. Now we have this code and we can apply it to any other boundary that we want. Let's say we want to change it to something more rectangular, like this one. And just reset it. And we can also have modifications of our structure by changing these numbers. And remember to do the reset. But how, uh, what about if we want to have some L shape, for example, boundary? Let's see something like this. In here, I can just trim the inner part. And I can join it together. Now, uh, if I connect this new curve in here, if I connect this one, now it doesn't work very proper because uh, these numbers need to be reset based on um, these dimensions. So. Let's just modify them manually. You can see that it's making to be more compatible with, with this boundary. But uh, if you want to, it uh, to be exactly on these uh, curves, you need to have an exact measurement of how these lengths are and their relation to this U and V numbers so that's something very important and as you see you can also change the placement of the um, supports uh, for example you can again use the mesh corners just to see how different it can be And also, you can do something else that is uh, using these naked points but mod uh, doing some modification on it. And how I mean uh, using a call pattern. So, as you see now, these points are selected, or we can take some other panels and some other Boolean patterns. Just put it on true and false. And if I connect it, you can see that these points now are selected. And it depends on the order of these points. So if I connect this one, now you can see that the structure is completely different. Or I can use a call index. So let's uh, use a points list to see the order of these points. Make it more visible by increasing the size. Okay. Now I decide that which points I want to be just deleted from the supports. So Let's say I want to um, keep number 12, number 3, 
number 23, 20, 16, and 8. So I want to just erase the rest. So in, in, I can use this one or I can use a list item because uh, I want mm, more numbers to be deleted. So it's a better way to use this one and I can use a panel to define which indexes I want to keep. And I, as I told, number 3, 23, 20, 16, 8, and 12. Let's just work with these numbers. And okay, let's just hide the other ones. And now you can see that the structure is coming like this. And maybe we, we had to add some point in here, for example, number four, to make it more stable. Okay, so that's for this kind of boundaries. And what if we want to use another kind of boundary, like something in ellipse, in an ellipse shape? So if I connect this curve to this, you can see that it's completely out of this boundary. So it's not obeying this boundary line that we, we have defined for it. And the mesh, so if I just hide this part and I want to work on this first uh, phase, which was just making the mesh, you can see that it's not matching it. And in the next video, I will, I will teach you how to tackle this kind of problems.